I'm singing! Microphone check, one, two. Waka waka. Your camera looks really crooked. Check your level. <laughs> Enunciate. Enunciate and talk loud. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Remember when Dave Letterman used to say like... <laughs> <clears throat> testing, 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 testing. Business questions. <laughs> You're so weird. Okay. Okay, go. How did you... No. When did, okay. I got the question. Okay, okay, okay. I got the question, okay? okay. okay? <laughs> the blog started, um, it'll be 10 years this June that we've been blogging. It's crazy. We grew slowly, very, very slowly. Um, I think we're still growing slowly, but it took every bit of those 10 years to get to where we are now. I, I think that um, the biggest thing was that we were just really um, active within the blogging community, so we were always um, commenting on other people's blogs, and we you know, reached out to people that sort of had the same following as us and built friendships, and um, some of those friendships are still some of our closest friends today, so yeah. I think it's just all about being active and um, being consistent. Um, in all those 10 years, we've only really ever taken off a week here and there. Yeah. Um, it, for the holidays and vacation. <laughs> Scott, what do you <clears throat> What do you do? Well, I have a lot of flexibility because about six months ago, I left my full-time job of almost 15 years and have been full-time with Kim working on Yellow Brick Home and managing our rental properties um, since then. So, flexibility... It was a big, 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 big shift. A huge shift. Yeah. Um, so the work from home schedule looks like us working in our home studio yeah. five days a week. Um, or a treehouse renovating. From that home studio. Yeah. So it just depends. But um, our typical day is about 8 to 4. And um, when we have Lucy, then we are with her fully. And when we're working, we put our heads down and work as hard as we can so that way we can find the work-life balance. Yeah, having weekends for the first time in seven or eight years has been pretty great. Yeah. Lucy goes to a nanny share three days a week and we absolutely love it. So we drop her off at eight and she either gets dropped off or we pick her up at four. Uh, Monday through Wednesday, and the other two days of the week, we work really hard during Lucy's naps, and then while she's awake, one of us might take her on an yeah. adventure while the other one works. Or like run errands while someone works, or if Scott has something he has to do, then I'll take her, or vice versa. Yeah. So, so we just prioritize yeah. the workload and just see who's whose work is more important that day and whose work maybe has a shorter timeline yeah. and we balance from there. Something else that we do is the reason that we only have Lucy and a nanny three days a week is that gives us the flexibility to go to Treehouse during the week. So um, sometimes what we'll do is the last day of the week that Lucy is with her nanny, we'll just load up the car and go right to Treehouse and be able to work um, two work days from Treehouse and then still come home to Chicago and have a Chicago weekend with our family and friends. Since you are the principal photographer in this relationship, <laughs> go ahead. Um, I shoot all the photos that you see on the blog and most of the photos that you see on Instagram with a DSLR. I have a Nikon D800. I've had it for a few years. It's also what we're recording this video on. Um, and I do have an iPhone that takes great photos, but I am just really old school when it comes to being able to have like a true DSLR with all my manual functions. Here comes Libby. She's so old we have to help her onto the couch now. This Interesting is, This is a good question. question. This and is something that we've actually been toying with a lot. Um, the, in the last few months. So the five-year plan for this house is that most likely we don't think anything will change. We intend to stay in this house um, with the garden unit continuing to generate some rental income. We love this house. We love the location. Yeah. We love the block. We are super tight with our neighbors and the thought of leaving that is... is it it would have to be something really really special to leave. Yes. Yeah. We love 
working on homes too much to stop doing it. And um, we always joke that we became accidental landlords just because uh, when we bought this house, we weren't planning on having a two flat. So that sort of landed in our lap and it worked out um, for the better. And we've realized that we sort of enjoy being landlords when we have um, most of the control. As do you guys do you guys hate that word landlord? I think it's weird. Yeah. Property manager, something uh, like that. Something like we, that. We manage rental yeah. properties. We we like to be very present for our tenants, um, and so we enjoy doing that. So we've you know kicked around the idea of um, renovating another two flat in Chicago and. Um, do we yeah. keep the condo? Do we sell the condo? We don't know, but yeah. we're going to keep our eyes open and yeah. make decisions that feel right. The good news is that we're not in any sort of hurry, so we have time to make the right choice. Um, the only thing that time isn't kind with is, you know, how much homes cost, especially in the city of Chicago. So we are actively looking. Let's find the next project, I would Stay say. Stay tuned. So if you've been reading the blog um, for any length of time, you've probably heard us mention that we love to help out readers or friends or family where we can. Um, right now we are in a position where we've been able to help out some friends and family, which is amazing, but a big goal of ours is to be able to help out some of our readers. Um, unfortunately, that usually means the stars have to align, it has to work for a brand to sponsor, a makeover and um, the timing's got to be right. The yeah. location's got to be right. It's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, there's a sure. lot of moving parts. But you know, I think that it's something that we would like to do in the future, and um, it's something that we do pitch to potential brands quite often. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. But we are we're trying to make it happen more, and we hope that we can make it more. Yeah. We are fairly confident yeah. <laughs> that the stars of the show are not factoring in their time and expertise when they show those like magic numbers that pop up at the bottom of the screen. I think those numbers are just like just material. Material. So a lot of times I don't think that that includes you know the skilled contractor that is working on the renovation. Right, because so. we've had personal conversations with our contractors before, and they'll have people come to them and say, "Hey, I want this bathroom for five thousand dollars." And the contractor has to tell them, well, that's a ten thousand dollar bathroom. Yeah. It's five grand in materials and five grand in labor. Right. So the, the labor is really um, it's an important part of the budget. And it's and a lot of times reason. almost half. So keep that in well, mind. I mean, that's a I mean it depends on what sure. the materials are. In short, I think that those numbers are not not entirely not entirely true. They're not all encompassing. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> When we What's your favorite temperature? 2700K. 2700K. Okay. No more than 3000K. 2700 to 3000, yeah. we feel, is the sweet spot. Although, our home gets great natural light, so natural light tends to be bluish and on the cooler side, so... Well, it depends on the time of day. This is a rabbit hole. When you buy a light bulb, you can look at the package and you will see a number on the side that says... It might say 2700K, which is the Kelvin scale that dictates the temperature of a light bulb. The smaller the number, the warmer the bulb. Um, for example, a 5000K is a bluer bulb. So we stay away from those. They tend to look a little cold. And I think that if you stick with LED bulbs in the 2700 to 3000K family, you're going to get really nice warm light. Always put your lights on a dimmer. dimmer. When it comes time to choose a paint color, we are big proponents of the notion that it's a lot easier to get it right the first time. So we like to put a we lot We don't of, always get it right the first time though. We but try really hard to. Yeah. So we put a lot of color swatches on the wall. Yeah. We might get four, five, six, seven, eight different Samples Ten, of paint that... 15. I don't think we've gone that crazy. But anyway, we, we'll get all these different sample little test pots. They're about $3 a piece. Um, and we will put them up on three or four sides of a room, 
see how they look throughout the course of the day because light does shift. Can, just... I, can I make a suggestion though? Sure. Before you buy all those sample pots, start by getting as many swatch cards from the store as possible. I mean, those are free. Two or three of each. And you can tape them up on your wall and then throughout the day, you know, notice which ones you like, take down the ones you don't like immediately, and just get rid of them. We put the sample pots, uh, I'll brush them onto a piece of foam board and move it around the room. That is really the best way. The bigger your swatch, the more accurate your reading will be. And you know what, if you end up buying a gallon of paint and you don't like it, then you have to paint again. Yeah. I mean, how many times do we paint our living room? Twice? Three times? At least. Okay, besides having a great accountant, um, if you need a rec in the Chicago area, let us know. Got you. Um, but something that we are really, really diligent about is every single Monday, we take about 30 minutes, one of us takes about 30 minutes, and we go over every single purchase we made throughout the week, whether it's personal or for business or income, whatever it is, we deposit checks, we mark everything, and we use... Um, Wave? Wave. It's yes. like it's a cloud software, so you do it all online. Because we do it every week, it's not a daunting task that we have to do every month or every quarter or even once a year at tax time. So and, and, and that program allows us to mark different sources of income, yeah. whether it's yellow brick home income versus personal, things like that. It helps us keep track. Yeah. So we find just find a way that works for you and do it every week. That's the short answer. Yeah, that's what works for us. Yep. We have a How number. Do you get paid? Well, technically, I don't. Uh, <laughs> we have a number of sources of income. Wait, can I just say I, I personally love this question because our family still asks us, us this question. Our friends ask us this question. We get it a lot. So we, we get it a lot. We get it. The easy, the the there's kind of like four-ish. Is four the right number? So we have income from our rental properties. We have income from sponsorships on the blog. I would say that blog-wise, our sponsorships, um, when we do, when you see a post that says, this post is sponsored by, those are our brand partners, and that's probably the largest part of our income. On the blog, yes. On the blog. And, and then, then also we have ad revenue, and we also have- Affiliate revenue. Affiliate revenue. We write contributor posts for other sites as well from time to time, so sometimes you might not see that directly on our blog, but we will write for other people yeah. too. Let's both answer that one. Okay, you give your biggest piece of advice and then I'll give mine. Okay. The biggest piece of advice I have for somebody that wants rental properties, if we had to do it all over again, our home that we're sitting in right now, our Chicago home, has a garden unit apartment that completely offsets the mortgage of the house. So we live rent-free, essentially, and if we were to do the first-time homeownership thing again, I think that we would look for a property that could offset itself. Uh, that would be my biggest piece of advice. And be kind to your tenants. Yeah, I mean, that is the ideal. That's the dream. Did I do it? <laughs> I stole Kim's answer. No, no, no. <laughs> that, no, this is my answer. Um, my answer is if you're going to be a landlord, make sure that you know what is required by you um, based on the city that you live in. So whether that's documents that you need to provide to your tenants or um, whatever they need to sign or if there is exact words that you need to put into your lease, know what that is. Um, there is a source that we use in Chicago called Domu, and it's a great source for landlords to get documents that they need, but you don't want to mess with that. Um, always have a contract in place, always provide the right documents, because um, at least in Chicago, landlords don't have a lot of rights, um, which is fine. Uh, the tenants do have more rights than the landlord, so you want to protect yourself. Save money where we can. We try to live a relatively modest lifestyle. Yeah. And I mean, that's where we like to spend our money on homes. That is where we spend the majority of our money. So we're not very frivolous in other ways. Um, we've had this t-shirt for 10 years. It's 
very important to we us. We share it. We literally share, share share clothes. That's how you budget for a renovation. <laughs> we share clothes. Um, I'm not like a shoe crazy person. All I'm saying is that when we know that we have a renovation project coming up, we start to set money aside and we just like to pretend that we're not allowed to touch it. And then when we see the funds start to build up, we say, okay, could we start to, um, should we call our contractor and have him come over and let us know if what we have in mind is feasible within a certain price range. And we sort of go from there. But we will start saving at least six months out, if not a year out, if not years out, just knowing that's what we want to do. Right. Yeah, I think um, not opposed. we're not opposed to a project that's outside of the realm of what we're used to, whether that's a book or like a product line or something. Um, I don't know, like that seems like something that would be really fun and challenging for yeah. us. So if something knows? comes along, yeah, we'll see. We will see. Yes, we yes. can yes, host yes, a yes. meet and greet very soon. Um, we are going to be hosting a flash sale for charity and we will be posting more information on the blog. Um, it's just going to be a fun way to shop and mingle and hang out and eat and drink and hopefully have a lot of fun while raising money for charity. So details will be coming soon. Yes. And if all goes well, I mean, it's something that would be fun to do more than once. Yeah. Round one's going to be in the West Loop yeah. in Chicago. So road trip. Yeah. Make it happen. We yeah. love it. We do. We, we use it, it all the time. Every time we get it out to clean up a mess or a spill mm -hmm. from a baby or an animal or Kim's Three pets. clumsiness. What? How dare you? Okay. Business <laughs> done. Personal. Personal coming at ya.